duplicating objects. Hello there. In the previous tutorial, we learned about the ways of manipulating objects transformations by manipulating the pivots. Here in this tutorial, we're going to learn about various ways of duplicating objects. Well, hold on now. Duplicating objects is acceptable, but there's a lot of different ways. Well, we'll learn about them here straight away. Here in this scene, we have an object. With the object selected, go to Edit Menu and click this Duplicate option here once at the very bottom of the drop-down list. Or you can hit Ctrl D from your keyboard. Now, a duplicate of the selected object has been created in the viewport. But we're unable to see it, right? Well, if you watch closely, the object is kind of different. It's because the duplicated object overlaps the initial object we used for duplication. Now hit W if you're not in the translation mode. Translate the duplicated object a bit away from the initial object. And now you can see the duplicated object and the initial object used for duplication. You can create any number of duplicated objects by keeping on hitting the duplicate option in the edit menus or by clicking Ctrl D from your keyboard. Maya created these objects in hierarchies. We'll discuss about hierarchies in our near future. But for now, let's learn about what? Yes, various ways of duplicating an object. Now, you can also duplicate an object with options previously being set. Now, what was that? Well, we delete all these objects in our scene and create a new polygon primitive from the shelf. If you go to the Edit menu, and here below the Duplicate option, you have Duplicate Special option. If you click over this option box here, we get a window for Duplicate Special. Before going to the options, always have the habit of resetting these options by going to Edit and clicking Reset Settings once. With the default settings left behind, we'll just concentrate on this area alone. Now here we have the options for transformations, and here are the options for specifying numbers of copies that we're going to duplicate. We can either type in a value over here, or click and drag this slider to increase the value. Now let's type in a value of 5 in the Number of Copies option. And over here in the Translate X, type in a value of 2, and then hit Apply. Watch what happens. Maya creates 5 duplicates of this object, each at a distance of 2 units in the positive X axis. That is, the second object in our scene, or the first duplicate, is created 2 units away from the original. And this object next to this is created at 2 units away from the first duplicate and, of course, placed at a distance of 4 units away from the original, or the initial object, in the direction that we specified. If you just go ahead and move this duplicate special window, and watch the translate X value of this object in the channel box, you can see a value of 4. If you go further and select the next object, which is the third duplicate from the original object, the value changes to 6, and so on and so forth. Thus, these duplicates are created at an interval of two units with respect to each other, for the options that we set in the Duplicate Special window. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Similarly, you can also set options for rotation and scale individually, or you can set options for all three of them. I would ask that you experiment by entering in different values for different transformation options, and watch what you get. With that, we come to the end of this lesson. Now, in our next tutorial, we'll take a look at the Special Duplicate option, Duplicate with Transform. Transforming Duplicates Hello there. In our previous tutorial, we had a brief look at the way of duplicating objects. And finally, we end up with the Duplicate Special option. Now, as I previously said, I want you to go ahead and explore these different option sets in the option window of the Duplicate Special and find what you get in the scene. Now, what else can we play with in Duplicate option, eh? We have an option called Duplicate with Transform in the same Edit menu below the Duplicate Special option. Now, what does it do? It calculates any transformation that takes place for the first duplicated object from the initial object, and it will double those transformation values for the second duplicate, and triple the values for the third duplicate, and so on and so on. Well, now we'll see how to do it in this tutorial. Now, we have a scene open here in Maya, with this object being at the center of the scene. And what we want is the duplicates of this object to make circles. Now, how do we do that? Well, normally we would create or duplicate objects and orient them. But it's impossible to place them exactly at equal distance by manual orientation. 
People do make mistakes, right? Well, Maya won't. We'll see how. Go ahead and delete all the objects except the initial object in our scene, and just move it to the end of the grid. Now press and hold D, and bring the pivot to this object to the center of the grid, which is nothing but the center of origin. Now hit E on your keyboard to bring the rotation gizmo, and duplicate this object by going to Edit, Duplicate with Transform, or by hitting Ctrl D from your keyboard, which is the hotkey for Duplicate with Transform option. With that being done, just rotate this option a little bit in the Y direction. With no other adjustments, I specify again with no other adjustments, just hit Shift D once from your keyboard, which is nothing but the capital letter D. Watch what happens. Another object has been duplicated at the double the distance of the initial and first duplicated object. Now, from where you are in the scene, keep hitting Shift D five more times. Now we'll stop and watch what we get. Wonderful array of objects, isn't it? What Maya has done is it's calculated the transformation, which is the rotation and translation between the first and duplicated object, and just keeps on doubling the transformation value one level to the next other duplication. So we got what we told you earlier. So what else would you expect from Maya? Maya is a wonder tree that will keep you fetching surprises. Maya will never say no for surprises. With enough of these surprises, unfortunately we've come to the end of this lesson. With that, we'll go on to the next and learn about grouping and parenting objects. Grouping Objects Alright, I hope we're on a good road towards Maya. With this learning curve and the elaborate pace of learning, I'll bet you uh, we can contain Maya in the very near future. Now, with that positive idea, let's get into this lesson. Before that, I'd like to remind you that what we've learned in the earlier tutorials... We learned how to make magic with the duplicating object in Maya. We also learn how to manipulate the duplication of an object by controlling the object's pivot and so on. Yet in this lesson, we're going to learn about grouping features in Maya. Well, grouping is nothing but creating common node for a set of objects, where we can operate the node to operate the entire objects in that group together. And whenever you require, you can operate the objects in that group individually. Well, what's all that? Well, it's nothing but similar to social groups in our society, where we have lots of individual elements connected together to form a group so that they follow the instructions in harmony from the head. And no less than that, here in Maya, you can give orders to a group for all the individual objects contained in them to follow those orders. Now, we're going to work with grouping objects from the Outliner window. For that matter, let's take a look at the Outliner. You can view the Outliner window along with the Perspective panel by clicking this icon over here. Or you can obtain the Outliner as a separate window by going to Window Menu and clicking once over the Outliner to get it as a separate tear-off window. Now let's close it off and work in this Perspective Outliner view, which will better suit our workflow. Well, first off, what, what is an Outliner? Well, it's nothing but another way of looking at the objects in a scene, even with lots of details. Now watch here. We have the default camera with which we can view our scene, and also the two default lights here that have lit our scene. You can not only view the object here, you can also identify the relationship it has with the other objects in the scene through this outliner. And also we can filter out the specific objects to be viewed in the scene, and so on. You can also select objects and can also rename them from the outliner, which we'll be discussing in the chapters to come. With that left behind, let's learn about grouping some objects. Now we have a new scene with three objects in our viewport. Just marquee select all three of the objects. And watch all three objects get selected in the outliner. If I just deselect and click and drag over the objects named in the outliner, watch that I can actually select the objects from the outliner. Now if I go to Edit menu and click Group once, or hit Ctrl G on my keyboard, which is the hotkey for grouping, Watch what happens. A group node has been created in the outliner with the default name of Group 1. If I just click over the plus sign, watch that you can see these three objects are placed in this node. I can just select the group node so as to select all the objects in that group. Now without selecting the group, if we select the individual objects and rotate them in Y axis, watch what happens. They rotate around their own pivot. Well, it's supposed to happen, isn't it? 
Now, go ahead and select this group node, so as to select all the objects in that group, and now rotate them around the same y-axis. Watch what happens. The objects revolve differently. Well, now why is this? This is because all the objects now revolve around the common group pivot to all of them, unlike earlier when they rotated around their own individual pivot point. What now? Do you need another object to join in this group? Well, let's go ahead and create an object from the shelf. Now we can view this object in the outliner. Now obviously we don't want this object separated from the group and feel alone out there in the world. Let's unite this object along with the other objects in the group. Now if you just middle click and hold it and drag this object over this group 1 node, watch that the arrow has a plus icon. Now drop the cursor over that. Watch. When you click this plus icon of this group node, if it's not open, the newly created object is also placed in that group. Now if you select the group node, all of the four objects, including the new one, get selected. Now what if an object behaves badly and you want to remove it from the group? Well then just select that object which you want to remove from the group and just middle click and drag and drop it over here in the empty space of Outliner. Now watch, that object has been removed from the group and placed alone in the scene. With that learned, we are at the end of this lesson. Our next tutorial will go ahead and find out about parenting objects. Parenting objects. In our last tutorial, we had a look at a way of grouping objects and how grouped objects behave to individual commands and group commands. In this tutorial, we'll discuss about creating parent-child relationships between objects. Now, before going on, let's experiment it out and have an insight as about to what a parent-child relationship between objects is all about. It's similar to the parent-child relationship in our society. Guess what? Obviously, the child has to follow the parent's order. That's the relationship between the child object and the parent object in Maya, in that a parent object can have many child objects, but a child can only have one parent. Now, with that little speech, let's go ahead and work it out. Now we have two objects in a scene named A and B, and we want this A object to control the B object. That is, we want A to be the parent and B to be the child and follow the instructions of A. Now let's go ahead and select B first. This is because the child object has to be selected first, and then hold down the shift on your keyboard and select the A object. Obviously, the parent has to be selected last after selecting one or more child objects. In this way, you can select any number of objects first to behave as the child, and then finally the parent object in order to control the entire child objects that were selected first. Now go to the Edit menu. And at the very end, we have the option Parent. Click it once or hit P on your keyboard, which is the hotkey to parent the B object to the A object. Or if I hit Control z to go back and just drag and drop this B object over the A in the outliner, if I just open up the plus icon. Watch that the B object has been placed under the A object. Now, if you select the A object, which is the parent, watch the B object, which is the child, also get selected along with it. If you transform the parent object, the child object also transforms for the same value of the transformation of the parent. Watch as I translate the parent, the child object also gets translated. If you deselect and select the child object again, you can individually work with it. If you wish to unparent the object, you can do that by just middle clicking and dragging the child object here and dropping it in the empty space of the outliner over here as we saw earlier. Now watch the object has been removed from that parent node and now placed individually and now if I go and transform the parent objects watch that the child object doesn't follow the parent object's order. So we've removed the parent-child relationship between these two objects. Now with that we come to the end of this lesson. Now believe me we're making great progress here in Maya but still it's a long way to the end of the road and we'll keep moving until we get there. All right, in the next tutorial, we'll learn about naming objects. Naming and Renaming Objects In the previous tutorial, we learned about grouping and parenting objects. Now, here in this tutorial, we'll learn about naming objects. All right, off we go. Now, we have a new scene open in Maya. Let's create two polygon spheres in the scene from the shelf and place them apart. 
Then select the first object and watch over the channel box here. It shows the name as P-Sphere 1, which is nothing more than the Polysphere 1. If you select the second object, the object's name is Polysphere 2. These are the default names created by Maya in a hierarchical order, which we will discuss in upcoming lessons. If it's for two names, it's all right, but we can identify a specific object if there are lots of objects in our scene. It's unimaginable to find an object if it's been misplaced. For that matter of concern, we can name the objects and identify them by simple techniques, all of which we're going to see right now. All right, let's learn the simple way of naming an object. Now, with any of the objects selected, if you click once over the default name over here in the channel box, you can type a name in as you desire. And then hit Enter to get that name. Now, also, if I hit Control a for my keyboard and go to the Attribute Editor window, and in this Transform node, watch that we have the name of the object that we typed in the channel box. You can also type a name in here to change the name of the object. Also, you can go to Outliner window and double-click over the object's name, which we've just now named, and we can type in a name here to rename the object. Not only that, if you remember the icon over here in the status bar, which we use for relative and absolute transform in the transform lesson, go there and just click once over this arrow and select the option Rename. Now, as you select, you'll get a different text field with the name that we specified for the object, right? Now, you can rename the object from here as well, but for all of them, make sure the object is in selection mode. With these simple ways, there are lots of other options for naming an object, which we'll discuss them in the lessons to come as we see fit. Now, what has been learned, we'll learn about some other ways of working with objects' names. Now, in the previous lesson, we learned about grouping objects. Now, what if there are many groups in a scene and you want to identify an object to which the group belongs? For that, we can give common prefix names to that group and find them later by the method we're going to discuss. Now, let's go to this new scene, Open in Maya, where we've created objects and placed them in a group named Group 1. If you select any individual object in this group and hit the up arrow, watch all the objects in the group get selected. Or we can also select the group by the familiar way that we know by selecting the group node from the outliner. Now, with the group node selected, Go to the Modify menu and click over the Prefix Hierarchy Names. And here in this window, type in a name, say Mark, and hit OK. Now, if you take a look at the Outliner window, or in the channel box over here, watch that the prefix that we typed in has been added before all the individual objects' names in that group. Now, what if there are lots of groups in our scene? And what if you want to select the objects only in the Mark group? Well then, go to the status bar and click and hold over the same icon where we rename the object and select the option Select by Name. Now type in over here the name we gave as a prefix, which is nothing but Mark, followed by asterisk symbol, and then hit Enter. Watch what happens. All the objects in our group that have the prefix Mark get selected. In this way, we can easily identify our objects even if we misplace them in our scene. Not only that, but if you go to the Modify menu over here and click Search and Replace Names, you'll get this window. Now, as the name suggests here, you can type in the object's name, and here you can type in the name you want to replace with, and hopefully do the same when you click this option, Replace. I would ask you to go ahead and experiment with these options and learn your way through them. With that, we've come to the end of this lesson. In the next tutorial, we'll learn about another important part of hierarchies, the hypergraph hierarchy and connections.